today's topic is going to kind of come off a little negative, and I don't mean that. This is just the truth and the reality, and so we have to talk about it. So I'll do the best I can not to be too negative, uh, but these are some issues that you're going to face. So here's the opening statement. You are never, ever, ever going to please every person in your congregation. You are going to live your life under a microscope, both by the church and the community that you live in. You're going to be loved and hated. You're going to be seen as the best and the worst, all kind of at the same time, again, from people within the church and with outside of the church. People are going to critique you in all areas of, of your life and ministry. And so I'm just going to share with you uh, some real life critiques uh, that I've had in, in my last uh, 25 years. I've been critiqued on my preaching. I literally had a man after I had preached and Sunday service was over, waited around to talk to me and then wanted to go up on the stage and teach me stage presence and delivery because he didn't think I was doing a really good job. I had a person critique my office hours and they told me that I was not in the office enough and that they never saw my vehicle there. Um, then I had somebody else say just the opposite, like you're in the office way too much. You need to be out visiting and doing things in the community. I confronted both of them with my journal uh, that showed exactly how I spent my office hours and how many uh, ministry hours I was putting in each day. So that kind of quieted them. I had a person come in and critique my office. When I was in youth ministry, uh, a grumpy old guy walked into my office, kind of looked around and and uh, looking at the decor and the music I had playing. and and just real kind of negatively said, well, this don't look like a pastor's office. And my response was, you're right, it's not. It's, it's a youth pastor's office. It's designed to draw teenagers and make them feel comfortable in my office. And he continued to say his opinions. And I, I kind of shut him down. I said, look, if you don't like my office and the fact that it's designed for teenagers, you don't have to come back in here. And uh, he never came back into my office. Um, when I was younger, I liked to wear my hair longer, a lot longer than what it is now. And so when I left college and, and entered the ministry, um, I just kind of let it grow. It wasn't like down my back, but it was kind of, you know, collar length. And I had somebody come up to me and say, uh, you know, I think it's time for a haircut. You're starting to look like a girl. And so they kind of uh, don't have boundaries and they kind of talk about that. Same with your clothes, or if you're a, a female, maybe your makeup and, and hairdo as well. I've had people critique my music. I mean, I'm, I'm a product of the 80s. I love 80s music. I, I love hair bands. I love country. I, I mean, I can kind of listen to anything. I, I really like it loud. I like it fast. I like screaming guitars. And, and I've had people critique my music. And, and even when it's, it's Christian artists, uh, because they don't understand it. They don't know who the artist is. They've critiqued my music. Um, I've been questioned as to why I took teenagers, you know, to certain Christian concerts, you know, again, because people don't know uh, the musician. They don't know their message. They don't listen to it. So I've been questioned about that. Um, our house, the house that we live in now, glory to God, uh, he just blessed us with this amazing house. It's a beautiful house. And uh, we're starting to use it to uh, for ministry purposes and invite people in where we can sit at the table and, and, and share. And, uh, you know, some people kind of look at it because it, it is a big house. Um, but people have looked at that and kind of gone, why does the pastor live in that neighborhood in that big old house? Well, because God blessed me with it. But there are people who think that, you know, pastors should should be of humble means and and be poor and, and drive used cars and and live in small houses or, or old houses or stuff like that. So people are going to critique where you live, what neighborhood you live in, the car that you drive. They're going to critique your spouse. The truth is, 
for us, they hired me. They did not hire Rhonda. And so Rhonda should be treated like any other person in the church in the fact that she has the freedoms to be involved as much or as little, and she can pick and choose the ministries that she wants to be involved in. And a lot of times churches think, oh, we're getting two for one. We're hiring both, you know, or we're hiring one, but the other one will work as well. And no, you hired one and the other person gets to pick and choose. Um, people will critique your kids because they're pastor's kids and they will hold them at a different standard, which is wrong. Like, just let my kids be kids, you know, and, and Jordan and Justin uh, were held to a different standard because they were pastor's kids and that's unfair you know they should uh just have the freedoms to be kids and grow up and just do what normal kids do without the stigma of being well you're a pastor's kid you're held at a different standard a higher level there will be people who will want to come and tell you how to do your job even though they've never preached a sermon they've never led a youth ministry they've never been on pastoral staff They've never done the things that pastors are called to do. And they will want to tell you how to do your job. <clears throat> There's going to be times when you're going to get the raw end of the deal. You know, you're going to get the shaft. You're going to be the one left holding the bag. The finger's going to be pointed at you. You're going to take the blame for something. Maybe you did it. Maybe you didn't do it. But the sad point is... All that's going to come from church people, from staff members, sometimes from pastors. And it's not right. It's just how people respond and react. And sometimes it's going to come down really, really hurtful on you. And sometimes you're the one who's kind of been ostracized and left alone to deal with those things. Accusations are going to be made. Um, I had an accusation made against me. It, it was made by uh, two people in the church anonymously. Um, they signed, uh, they did not sign their written accusations against me, um, but it kind of caught a little bit of wind. And so, uh, you know, it, it, before it became a big deal in the church, um, I was able to uh, combat those accusations because I had written documentation. Um, again, I had journaled. And so I was able to go to leadership and say, hey, this accusation has been made against me, but here's the documentation that shows I'm not the one to blame. And, and that protected me in that situation. Uh, come to find out the accusations really stemmed out of these people just did not like me. And so they wanted to make my life miserable. Um, on top of accusations, there's going to be flat out lies told about you. Um, there, there was a lie told about me, uh, when I had left the ministry, um, the, the remaining staff, uh, the remaining senior pastor, really it was the senior pastor, uh, you know, wanted to save face about the truth that as to why I had left and uh, told a blatant lie, um, a lie that, that was very hurtful and harmful to me as a person, but uh, had the potential to really damage my ministry going forward. And uh, the good thing was, again, there was a paper trail that disputed that. Uh, there was no evidence to support uh, what that person was saying against me. And, uh, but it was still very hurtful. Um, it hurt my wife, it hurt my kids, it hurt me. Again, it had the potential to hurt my ministry, but people will make accusations and tell lies about you uh, for a variety of reasons. They wanna save face, they wanna point the blame at somebody else. Uh, they don't like you, they, they wanna drive you out, they wanna drive a wedge, whatever it is. But just be prepared that, that all these things I just talked about are gonna happen over the course of ministry. It's not good, it's not right, it's not fair, it's not godly, it's not Christ-like at all, but we're dealing with people, people who are broken, people who are sinners, people who have unrepentant sins in their life, people who react instead of respond, people who don't know how to deal with certain situations, people who just don't like you. Um, so just a heads up, 
here's here's what I've learned over the years because I know these things have happened in the past, they're gonna happen again, is I try to live my life very transparently. I communicate very well with my leaders. I communicate with my church in general. Um, I journal, I document. So, um, you know, if somebody asks me about something going on in my ministry or my life, uh, maybe I don't give them full details, but I can say, look, here's, here's the situation you're talking about. And it's been journaled, it's been documented. Um, I seek to use godly wisdom when I make decisions, when I make choices, especially the hard ones, because there's going to be some hard choices that, that really the buck's going to stop with you as the pastor, and people are going to disagree with you, they're going to argue with you, they're going to think you're wrong, but you still had to make the decision, so use godly wisdom and seek counsel from that. Um, so so those are two of the things that, that I do, and what those help me with is reveal the truth and protect me, protect my family, protect my ministry. Um, I just, again, want you to go in with eyes wide open and know that everything is not rainbow and ice cream and puppy dogs. You know, there's some uh, tough things, there's some mean things, there's some ugly things that happen to pastors in ministry, and I just want you to be aware of them so when these things pop up, uh, you know, maybe you've spent some time thinking about them. Maybe you've sought some other counsel from some other pastors and, and sought out their wisdom. And maybe you've, you've sought out the, the Lord uh, and how to deal with these issues that come up. Again, I didn't want to be negative. I didn't want this to be a bummer of a video. But I just want to be open and honest with you so that you know going forward some of the things that you may face. My hope and my prayer is that you never face these things, but most likely you will because we're dealing with people. Hey, I love you. Thank you for serving the church, for loving God, and for loving people. Bye-bye.